Hello, in this video, we will learn how to solve any square and hollow pattern programs in Java. Now pattern program requires you to use nested for loops. If you do not know iterations in Java, please first watch my videos on iterations. We will start by understanding some printing basics. First is that we print always row by row. We cannot go back to previous row and print. You have to print the entire row and then only move to the next row. Next is we always start printing from left side of the screen. If your star is printed away from the left side of the screen or if there is space in between the stars like in this hollow hill pattern here, then you do not jump and print. This is actually done by printing spaces. So in this line, there are some spaces, then one star, then again spaces, and then again one star. So let's get started with square patterns. The first thing in pattern program is that you would be typically given a size. Size means how big or what is the side of a square. Now either you could be asked to write in main and take in size from the user and you can use any input class like scanner to take this input. Or if you are writing a function, this n could be passed to you as a parameter. If you are already given size in the question itself, in that case you can just directly assign it to a variable n. For our example, we will consider that we have a size in variable n which has a value of 5. Also in the remaining video, we will just focus on the code to make the pattern. We will not write main every time. As I assume you will know how to put the code in main or any function and compile it. Let's start with a simple square as an example first. Now if you are asked to print one star, you will write a print statement which will print a star for you. Now if you are asked to print n stars, what will you do? We will use a loop here. The loop will start from j is equal to 1 to j less than equal to n. This loop will run 5 times and print the star 5 times. Now for the loop to run 5 times, there are two ways and you need to stick to only one method out of these. One is where you start from 1 and you run the loop till less than and equal to n. Other is that you start from 0 then run this till less than n. Both will run 5 times. If we start from 0, j will take values of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 which means it runs 5 times and if you start from 1 then j will take values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 which also runs 5 times. The reason I am focusing on this is that I see many times kids getting confused between less than and less than equal to and it messes up the whole pattern. So pick up one which you are comfortable with and stick with it. We will use 1 to less than equal to n in all our examples. So we have written this code with which we can print one row. But what if we want to print this row 5 times to get our square pattern? So what I will do is insert this complete set of code inside another loop which will print this row 5 times. But if you run this, you will see that all stars are getting printed in the same row. How do we fix this? We know our print statement prints in the same row and println statement goes to the next line. So can we just change the print star statement to println? If we do that, then what happens is now that the each star is going to the next line. But what we wanted was 5 star in the same row and then it should go to next line. Means this loop should continue to have print statement 5 times and only after the whole row is printed we should go to the next line. So we will insert a println statement as the last statement of the outside loop. So let's just understand how this loop will work. We start with the outer loop. It holds our row numbers and starts with 1. Then we enter the inner loop. It holds our column numbers and starts with 1 and runs till 5 printing all the columns. 
Once inner loop is finished, it executes the println statement to go to the next row. The control comes back to the outer loop and outer loop increments by 1. So row 2. Again inner loop prints 5 columns as it will again start from 1 to 5. Then the println statement takes it to the beginning of next row. This repeats for all rows till i reaches 5 and then we exit from the outer loop. Takeaway from pattern program is that do not forget to put println statement. It should be the last statement of your outer loop. This is very important point and if you miss writing println statement before the closing bracket, your whole pattern can go for a toss. Now if I just run this code, you will see your output has stars too close and it is giving an effect of rectangle instead of square. You can fix this by just adding an extra space next to the star in the print statement. So this is our final code to print a square. Now let's understand some basics of square indexes which we will use to make different patterns. Let's put in the index value next to each star and understand them over here. As you know we need two indexes i and j to go to a specific star. So the first star is at row 1 means index i is equal to 1 and column 1 means index j is equal to 1. The next star is at row index i is equal to 1 and column index j is equal to 2 and so on. Now in pattern programs, you would be asked to print only some specific stars from this square. Means you should know how to quickly identify i and j indexes you need to use. So if you are asked to print only the first row, it means print where row index i is equal to 1. And if it is last row, it means print where i is equal to n or 5. Similarly, to print only the first column, it means print when column index j is equal to 1. And the last column means print when column index j is equal to n or 5 in this example. Now if you are asked to process middle row or column, then it is nothing but n divided by 2 plus 1 or 3 in this example. Now what about the diagonals? If you see the right major diagonal carefully, here row is equal to column, means i is equal to j. And if you see the left or minor diagonal, here row plus column is same in all and it is same as n plus 1. Now that we understand about the indexes, let's look at different type of pattern programs that are asked. Let's first start with the simple program which asks us to print parallel bars or the first and last column of a square. We will first get in the pattern program we just learned for square. Now when we learnt indexes, we learnt that the first column j is 1 and the last column is where j is n. So what we will do is add an if condition inside our nested loop. We will just check if j is 1 or j is 5. Only in this condition we will print star. So with just this change will we get the new pattern? When we run it, we see two parallel bars close to each other. But what we want is them to have proper distance between them. Why we did not get this space? That's because if we want the stars to be printed apart, we need to add space in between. So we add a else to our if statement. So now this if statement says that for the first and last column print star, but for the remaining columns in between fill with space. Now when you run it, you will see it is still not looking like a square, it's more like looking like a rectangle. Why? This is because we printed star and space means two characters in if and only one space in else. We need to ensure that we have the same characters to form a square. So we will add two spaces in else to match the number of characters printed in F. 
This gives us the pattern of parallel bars. Now what if we get a plus pattern? That actually means print center row and center column. Which we just learned earlier, it is just n divided by 2 plus 1. So we will just change our if condition to i equal to n divided by 2 plus 1 and j equal to n divided by 2 plus 1. If you run this, this will give us the plus pattern. Now what if it was a cross pattern? This actually means print the diagonals. We learnt earlier major diagonal has i equal to j and minor diagonal has i plus j equal to n plus 1. So we will just change our if condition in the nested loop for this and if you run it, it will give you the cross pattern. Now what if it was a hollow box pattern? We will first get in the program we just learnt for square. We know that the first row is i is equal to 1 and last row is i is equal to n and first column is where j is equal to 1 and last column is j is equal to n. Actually if you notice our for condition actually always holds the starting and ending position of both rows and columns. This is very important to note and will help you to convert any solid shape to hollow pattern. So we will just add a if condition to print star for only start and end of rows and columns else print space for remaining. This will give us hollow square pattern. Now how does hollow pattern works with triangle shapes? So first thing you necessarily need to know is how to form the shape with the basic star. If you have not watched my video to create any star pattern program you need to pause, click on the link given, watch that video and then return. It is very important that you first know how to create the shape with just star as we will just be reusing that code here and add an if statement to make it hollow. Now let's start with the hollow increasing triangle pattern. You can immediately recall the code which displays solid incrementing triangle pattern with star. Incrementing triangle has outer loop from 1 to n and inner loop from 1 to i. So for the hollow triangle pattern, what we want to print is the last row which makes the base along with the starting and ending star of each row to be printed. Now you have already learned last row means i is equal to n. How do we now get the starting and ending star of each row? If you look carefully, our loop for j always determines the starting and ending position for each row. So all you need to do is ask the if statement to print star for the last row means i is equal to n and when j is equal to 1 which is the starting star of each row and j is equal to i which is the ending star of each row. If you run this code, it will give us hollow increasing triangle. Let's try the same for hollow decreasing triangle pattern. We will first get the code which displays the solid decreasing triangle pattern with star. The decreasing triangle has an outer loop from 1 to n and inner loop from i to n. Now here we want the top row and we want again the starting and ending star of each row. Now our loop for j gives the starting and ending condition for stars to be printed in each row. So we will add an if condition for first row which is i is equal to 1 and j is equal to i and j is equal to n. If you run this it will give us the hollow decreasing triangle. Let's see now how it will work for the hill pattern. You can immediately recall the code which displays the hill pattern with star. So here as you know, it is made by actually displaying three triangles. In the first triangle of space, there is no change. In the second triangle, we only want the last row and the first side in the increasing triangle and we want the last row 
and the last side of the third triangle. So in the second triangle, we will add an if condition to print star only for the last row which is i is equal to n and the first side which is the starting condition in which j is 1 and for the remaining we have our else which continues to print space. In the third triangle, we will add an if condition to print the star only for the last row which is i is equal to n and the last side which is the ending condition in j which is equal to i. Else we print space as usual. If you run this, it will give us hollow hill pattern. Now how does this work in bigger pattern like diamond or butterfly pattern? Let's take diamond pattern as an example. Here we have our star pattern code for diamond. Now as you already know, this is created from 6 triangles. Again we will identify what we want to be printed in each triangle. There is no change in starting triangle of space. We need only the starting star of each row in the second triangle. So we will just take the starting condition of J loop which is J is equal to 1 above and J is equal to I below. So we will add that to the if statement. Then in the third triangle we only want the last star of each row which we will get from end condition of j. So we add j is equal to i in the if condition of the above triangle and j equal to n for the if condition below. If you run it, it will give you a hollow diamond. Hope you have understood how to solve the square and hollow pattern programs. You can always view these programs on our website simplycoding.in. If you have any doubts, do reach out to us at simplycoding.in. Thank you and goodbye.